it may seem obvious certainly to those people who are not Muslim they view the woman in Islam to be someone who is subjugated in fact some of them refer to women in Islam as being second-class citizens and they point out for example how the Muslim woman is forced and of course they like to spice it up we're not the only ones who like spice they like spice as well they like to spice up their words so the Muslim woman she is subjugated and she is forced to wear this hijab and this niqab and this garment that prevents them from doing anything in life and they are forced to do that by their men and this they say is a sign of man's authority over women in Islam they claim this is what they claim the hijab is a sign and the niqab is a sign of man's authority and domination over women which they claim is what Islam teaches they look at the woman in Islam as being no more than a domestic servant who is mistreated beaten regularly by her husband which is justified by him through verses of the Quran her witness is considered half of that of a man and they bring up many different claims to show in their mind how the position of women in Islam is the position of a second-class citizen she can't be a leader she can't be a judge she can't lead the prayers she can't do this and she can't do that these are their claims and so it may seem obvious that the woman in Islam is subjugated and you know what I'm gonna agree yes women in Islam are subjugated it's true in fact what does the word Islam mean what does the word Islam mean the word Islam means submission surrender subjugation actually not only are women in Islam subjugated men in Islam are subjugated to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what being a Muslim means that we subject our will to Allah's will we subject our desires to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we give priority to what Allah wants over what we want and we give priority to the guidance of Allah over the ideas of our limited intellect this is what being a Muslim fundamentally means but everyone is subjugated to someone or to something we are all in a state of submission and surrender to someone or to something and this is true even in the West where they talk about freedom but the West is not free you're not free to do anything you want in the West you're not free to drive on the wrong side of the road you're not free to go through a red traffic light you're not free to park anywhere you want you're not free to drive your car even without wearing a safety belt you're not free to kill murder rape and steal and do whatever you want 
There is no such thing as true freedom. It, it doesn't have a meaning. Freedom. Freedom of, from what? Every society, whenever people live together, they need rules in which to govern their behavior. And all of us as human beings, we do things in our life to please our parents, to please our friends, to please our wife or our husbands or our children. And those things that we do, maybe we don't want to do them. Maybe we don't feel like doing them. Maybe I'd much rather be doing something else. But why do I do that? Why do I do those things? Because I love my children. I love my wife. You love your husband. You submit out of love. Or perhaps sometimes you submit out of fear. Or sometimes you submit because you know that's the right thing to do. But human beings, all human beings, whether they're Muslim or not, they are living in states of submission. But being a Muslim means that we submit to Allah. The one that we submit to, the one that we surrender to, more than anything else and above anything else, 